Some breaking inputs coming in. This is what we are being told that Israel is planning a significant response to last night's uh, missile attack by Iran. The details and the timing are yet to be determined. We have Rishabh joining us on the broadcast. According to reports coming in, Israel could target Iranian oil facilities. Rishabh. Well, definitely, what we are learning that is Israel and Israel Defense Forces are looking into the possibilities of how to go ahead when it comes to the retaliation of what happened last night. As per IDF, the misadventure, quoting uh, IDF, misadventure of uh, Iran would be retaliated at the right time of choosing by Israeli Defense Forces. The possible uh, targets could be the infrastructure projects in uh, Iran, be it the ports, be it the uh, airports, as well as the oil refineries. Remember, Iran's major economic boost comes from the oil oil refinery that are in various parts of Iran. Few of them are very close to the Pakistan border as well on the eastern side of Iran. So Israel is now in a way planning to retaliate and retaliate not in a way to just hit the areas of defense, but also the areas of infrastructure is what we are given to understand. You know, a lot of chatter is on the telegram groups, uh, on social media, on the, the uh, darknet as well. Uh, a lot of uh, groups affiliated to IRGC or the the Iranian government are, are claiming that they have already told the United States that in case the, their oil refineries are uh, being targeted, they won't spare the oil refineries of the other Mideastern countries, which includes Saudi Arabia, which includes Kuwait, which includes Qatar as well. So definitely uh, a lot of back channel talks right now is definitely happening between Israel and the Western countries about the retaliation while Israel wants to retaliate and answer Iran at the earliest. But uh, there is a mounting pressure from uh, Western countries as well that you know, the retaliation should be limited in nature and should not escalate the situation any further. Right. Rishab, stay on with us. So while Israel has said that there'll be consequences, it's a mistake that uh, Iran has made. We have a response coming in from Iran as well. A statement has been issued by the foreign minister of Iran who has cited Article 51 of the UN Charter saying, we exercised self-defense, solely targeted military sites and acted after tremendous restraint. That's the response coming in. From Iran, we have Srinjay Chaudhary here in the studio with us. Uh, is Iran sensing the fact that the entire world seems to be standing, at least the prominent ones seem to be standing with Israel? Iran now issuing a statement saying, we only exercise self-defense. Well, self-defense, 180 ballistic missiles. So that's something that has to be taken into account. Also, Iranian territory, at least this time, was not attacked. Of course... It has to be said that at this point, the ideal thing would be a ceasefire. And let's also not forget that this attack happened on Rosh Hashanah, which is a very important day for Israelis, for Jews. So that has to be taken into account as well. Very, very important to note that now that all this has happened, it's important to actually assess how things can actually get worse. One, there can be another is, uh, uh, Iranian strike on Israel. There can be a counter strike by Israel on Iran, as uh, has been said, on Israeli oil facilities, Israeli military targets. There can be America getting into the act if there is an attack on American forces in West Asia then America with its aircraft carriers in the area, America with its troops in the area. There are F-18s mm. on the aircraft carriers. There are cruise missiles. The Americans could well get into the act. Mm. Of course, that is speculative mm. right now. Mm. But at this well, point, anything yes. can happen. At the moment, Iran says it only targeted military establishments and that it was uh, an act of self-defense. Let's uh, go cross to Ankit for that tweet put out by the foreign minister of Iran. This is the relatively new foreign minister of Iran. He just took office essentially in August. His name is Sayyad Abbas Argichi. He says earlier this evening, we exercise self-defense under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, targeting solely military and security sites in charge 
charge of genocide in Gaza and Lebanon. So that's what he's citing. They were military sites in charge of genocide in Gaza and Lebanon. We did so after exercising tremendous restraint for almost two months to give space for a ceasefire in Gaza. Our action is uh, concluded unless Israel regime decides to invite further retaliation. In that scenario, our response will be stronger and more powerful. So another threat implied here. Israel's enablers now have a heightened responsibility to rein in the warmongers in Tel Aviv instead of getting involved in their folly. And you know who this statement is meant for. This is squarely meant for the United States of America, Swati. All right, Ankit. Thank you very much for getting us the updates. In fact, we are now joined by Israeli spokesperson Guy Neer. Let's go across to him directly. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Now, our Prime Minister has already spoken to Mr. Netanyahu and has cautioned against a region-wide escalation. What are your expectations from India at this point? When we're talking about the international community as a whole, Israel is uh, expecting the international community to stand with Israel against the uh, threats of this Iranian-backed terror axis and um, threatening the stability of the entire region of, the, of West Asia and slowly the entire world. Right. Uh, Iran has now said that last night's action has concluded unless Israel, Israel wants to further escalate matters. How do you respond to that? As I said before, Iran will have to pay for its actions, them single-handedly throwing uh, over 180 ballistic missiles at Israel is uh, an act that needs to be addressed and will be addressed. Now, U.S. has made its position very clear. It stands solidly with Israel. What about the other countries in Middle East? I expect countries who haven't been part of this war up till now to not take part and engage in escalating this uh, thing forward. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us your time and for taking those questions. Let's also take a look at uh, how the world leaders are responding to this escalation. If one looks at uh, the current uh, situation, I think it would be right to start off with October 7th. Uh, we regard October 7th as a terrorist attack. Uh, we uh, understand that Israel had a need to respond. But we also believe that any response by any country has to take into interna account international humanitarian law, that it must be careful about uh, any uh, you know, damage or any uh, implications for civilian populations. Uh, and that given uh, what happened, what has happened in Gaza, it is important to have uh, some kind of international humanitarian uh, effort out there. But I utterly condemn this attempt by the Iranian regime to harm innocent Israelis, to escalate this incredibly dangerous situation and push the region ever closer to the brink. We stand with Israel and we recognize her right to self-defense in the face of this aggression. Iran must stop these attacks, together with its proxies like Hezbollah. We, of course, condemn uh, Iran's actions. Uh, we once again reiterate the call that we've made, along with the United States, the United Kingdom, the European Union, Italy, Germany, Japan, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE, uh, other nations as well, calling for a, a de-escalation. Uh, we're very concerned uh, about uh, Iran's actions, uh, which is why uh, we condemn them. Uh, it is a good thing that it would appear that the defence of uh, Israel, supported by the United States, uh, has uh, ensured that uh, there is no uh, loss of civilian life, it would appear, at this stage. Uh, there's been too much loss of life in that region. Does Israel have the right to send troops into Lebanon? Uh, what we want to do is to reiterate the call that we have. Israel, of course, has a right to defend itself. Uh, what we have called for consistently is for a de-escalation uh, in the region, along with our friends in the United States and others, we issued a joint statement with 13 nations uh, just a week ago. And we did.
All right, uh, Stranger Chaudhary continues to be with us here on the broadcast in the studio. You heard the world leaders, all of them standing solidly with Israel. At the same time, a word of caution also coming in in terms of the escalation in the entire Middle East region. Yes, that's bound to happen because there is a fear that the war can spread. It can get, this can just be the beginning. If things are as bad as they are right now, can you, do you realize how, how much worse it can be in a few days? Because if this continues to escalate, if Iran hits back again, if Israel replies to that, if the Americans are targeted, things could get much, much worse which is why at this point it becomes a major worry for every country in the world. Of course, as S. Jaishankar, the external affairs minister said, Israel has every right to defend itself. And that's exactly what it will probably do. Because, but now it's getting to a stage that things can well get out of hand mm. because things are difficult as they are right now. Right. And it could just be the beginning of the whole thing. Absolutely. So enjoy. Meanwhile, we have some breaking inputs coming in as well. MEA has issued a statement and uh, MEA is stressing upon diplomacy and dialogue amid the escalation. That's exactly the point. This is the Indian position that yes, there has to be diplomacy, there has to be dialogue to find a solution because Tomorrow, the Iranians will strike again, then the Israelis will strike back, then the Iranians will do something more, maybe the Americans will come back into, uh, come into this whole thing. If that happens, then the war widens, the crisis will become that much more acute. Right, so MEA in its uh, latest statement has said that uh, they are deeply concerned, India is deeply concerned at the escalation at this point of time and a call for restraint. That's what India is reiterating. MEA is stressing on dialogue and diplomacy. That is India's stand, in fact. Srinjoy, S.J. Shankar, while responding to that, also reminded uh, of the timeline. And it all started in October 2023, when the attack took place. Of course, uh, in terms of uh, what happened back then, it was a conflict between Israel and Hamas, which has now widened. So S.J. Shankar reminding about how it all started. And also a word of caution coming in. Yes, as far as, uh, as Jai Shankar was concerned, he said that the whole thing really began on the 7th of October. And that's when the Hamas attacked Israeli civilians, women, children, and others. And 1,200 people were killed. Now, that led to the Israeli attack on Gaza. Now, Jai Shankar's position was Israel had every right to retaliate. But... Jai Shankar also said that there were humanitarian issues, humanitarian laws that had to be kept in mind, which is basically a point speaking about the deaths of about 40, 50,000 people in Gaza, including mm -hmm. women and children. That was really Jai Shankar's position. Now the war has widened. Right. You have Hezbollah in it, you have the Houthis in it, you have Iran in it. So it's a very, very difficult situation, right. uh, the crisis hmm. is much more than it was in exactly right. a year we, ago. We will in fact play out that exact reaction coming in from SJ Shankar. Before that, let's go across to Hina joining us from the newsroom with more details on the latest issued, latest statement issued by MEA. Yes, Hina. Well, Swati, we know that there are a lot of Indians currently in Israel, in Iran, in Lebanon as well. And that's the reason why New Delhi is keeping a close eye on all the developments that are taking place in the Middle East. And this is another statement that we have got from Ministry of External Affairs. It's a statement on the evolving situation in West Asia that has been issued today after the missile attack from Iran on Israel. It says we are deeply concerned at the escalation of security situation in West Asia and reiterate our call call for restraint by all concerned and protection of civilians. A message that was earlier echoed by Dr. S. J. Shankar, the external affairs minister as well. Uh, the statement also mentions that it is important that the conflict does not take a wider regional dimension and we urge that all issues be addressed through dialogue and diplomacy. So India sending a very, very important message that e you know even the current situation when we are seeing escalation between uh, Israel and Iran 
Iran, especially after uh, Israel eliminated the complete, the top leadership of Hezbollah, uh, the group backed by Iran, and then the retaliation coming in from Iran. Well, the clear message coming in from India that, you know, all issues can be addressed through dialogue and diplomacy. We know UNSC has called for an important meeting right. as well today. So we'll have to see uh, the kind of response we get from the world on this very, very crucial message by yes, India. Yes, we'll keep tracking that, you know. Thank you very much for getting us the details. Let's